this is sent, this will be pulled apart. I'll pull out the push rod. Um, bell crank typically stays on. Um, but basically when you get it, I've marked these lines here where you can see exactly when this is inserted all the way. But the first step is actually to have your horizontal here, you have your vertical here, grab the push rod out of the vertical, remove the fork fitting at the top, and wind the push rod into the barrel nut. And mark on the vertical, you can see probably a mark here, or maybe not. Maybe you can't, there's a, there's a black mark there. I normally put a mark right on that push rod, just so I can see how many revolutions I'm putting it into the barrel nut. You cannot go more than four full revolutions. If you do, the push rod comes out of the barrel nut and it seizes rotation and it breaks. I've seen that happen many, many times with Mark II foils. Um, so it's really critical that you only go in four times. Don't go in two, go in four, you need the thread length. But if you mark it, it's nice and easy to do. Once you've got your foil and your push rod in, take the whole lot and slide the push rod into the vertical and then rubber mallet uh, bash this on. That way, you, this is already set. Um, get the bolt, which is a quarter inch bolt, so never put a M6 in there. I've supplied you with a spare as well. Uh, manually always do up the thread until you can't anymore. That ensures that it's not cross-threaded. It's really critical um, that you manually start it and then get a screwdriver and then do the rest up by hand. Again, you want it pretty firm, you know, I like to get it nice and tight, but not crazy. You're not like leaning on it excessively. You're just getting it firm, you know, nice and firm, tight. Um, when you come to assembling this, what you'll have to do is get a screwdriver like that. And this fork fitting will be obviously loose because you've had to take it off to get it inside the um, vertical. So just get this inside and turn the fork fitting with, with the screwdriver to get it to wind onto the push rod. Now what I'm looking is, you know, depending on how much you wind that in and out, it'll change the position of the bell crank. Uh, what you want to do is grab a template, slide it onto this. Typically when you slide this, you need to pull the flap up ever so slightly so that it goes on nicely. When the template is on, it's in neutral position. You need to make sure that the bell crank has a very small amount of forward compared to the leading edge. So if you extend the leading edge of the foil, it'll be about here somewhere. So that bell crank has a little bit of a forward kink. Not much, just a little bit. So again, you, you adjust that by winding in and out this fork fitting. This sets your fast point on your boat. So that's why it's really important to get this right. If it's kicked back, you'll, you'll make up, mess up the fast point and you'll lose control. So that's a pretty important little setup. And then of course, you've got gearing holes here. Um, I typically sail on this hole in my boat. Um, I never use this one. I think this is too slow. Um, but yeah, this is a probably moist conditions, flat water. And then if you get really big waves, you can go on the downhole, um, but it does load up the boat. So, you know, control systems, you know, it, it puts a lot of load on everything, but you know, you can potentially use that um, when you're sort of you know struggling for control, um, and that's basically the main force setup. So um, the rudder is pretty straightforward. This come this comes glued together. It can be pulled apart if you really need to, but definitely contact me if you ever intend to do that. Um, but there is no reason to pull it apart because it fits inside the boat and the boat box in one piece. There really should never be a reason why you ever have to have to take this off, unless there's some breakages, you know that.